we do we think? Give us a thumbs up, maybe. I can see their faces. So okay. Yeah. Well, in the chat, let us know if you can't hear us because we're gonna get started. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you all for being here. Uh, it's so excited. I joke every time I do one of these presentations that I am such a nerd that I really enjoy this stuff. <laughs> and I get excited when other people seem to <laughs> sort of enjoy it too. So we'll see how this goes tonight. For anybody that I haven't met or for the folks online, uh, I'm Amanda Gonzalez. I am the clerk and reporter here in Jeffco. And tonight we are talking about county commissioner redistricting, which uh, well, here I've got a. We're doing so well. Oh, no. Huh? No looking It was working a second ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it one more try. Oh, All right. <laughs> See if that stays. All right. So, um, done introductions. We'll do a quicker round of the other folks in the room, um, what redistricting is and how it works, and then the process and why it's new this year. Uh, so for, I already introduced myself, but I also wanted to let Sarah introduce herself. I am Sarah McAfee. I'm the Chief Communications and Engagement Officer, new to the clerk's office as of April. Um, and more importantly, these are the pups. Uh, this is my little one, Judy. She just oh. peed all over the floor and I got a text on my way here. So that's fun. <laughs> um, I'll be working that out when I get <laughs> and then we don't want to forget Jenny, which is... who may also have been on. <laughs> okay, um, so redistricting is the process by which we draw new boundaries, right? We do a census every 10 years where in theory, we count everyone. And the idea is that these districts need to be the same size, right? This is the general idea of the time one person, one vote is that if the district that I'm in only has two people and the district that you're in has four people, it means that I have a bigger voice, right? My county commissioner only has to be accountable to the two of us, whereas your county commissioner maybe has to sort things out between the four of you, right? Um, and so that it would just be inherently unfair to update our districts um, after we do the decennial census. The other really important part of this is that it's a way of making sure that our districts reflect the um, the diversity of our communities. And thanks for joining us. Come on in. <laughs> so you might be thinking, if you're really nerdy and paid attention to some of this stuff, did we just do this? Did we just do redistricting? You would be right. <laughs> we did some redistricting. Uh, so in 2018, we passed Amendments Y and Z, right? And that created new processes for how we redistrict our congressional districts and our state house and state senate districts. Created an independent commission. I think independent commissions are the best way to redistrict. I think that uh, people should be choosing their politicians, not the other way around. We shouldn't have politicians saying, oh, I want these people because they'll vote for me. Right. Okay. Um, and I'm kind of proud that when I was one of the co-authors of Amendments Y and Z, I think it's pretty important. Uh, that is not quite what we do in Jeffco, and I'll get to that in a second. So as I mentioned, in 2020, we did the census. In 2021, we did the state redistricting, right? Okay. Um, and congressional redistricting. So we got that eighth congressional district in Colorado, which is now representative by uh, Dr. Udera Carabeo. That was the new districts that we drew in 2021. Now we are getting all the way down to local level county redistricting, which is what we're talking about today and the process that we'll be going through over the next month or so. So I mentioned that Amendments Y and Z, there were these multi-page documents that told us how we had to redistrict at the state level and the federal level for that matter. We don't have that the county. There's actually 
shockingly few, in my opinion, uh, requirements. Uh, but here they are. So we have to do this at least every 10 years. Uh, districts must be nearly equal in population. Uh, legally, the biggest difference that we can have between the smallest district and the biggest district is 5% of voters. Um, sorry, 5% of the population, not voters. Um, and those districts should be as compact as possible. Uh, you might be wondering what it means to be compact, yeah. and I will let you know that there are thousands of pages of legal decisions about what that may or may not mean. But here we are, those are the requirements. Uh, no less than, or no more than 5% difference. Hey, here to hang out with us about redistricting? Yeah. Awesome. We're just making sorry. I'm curious because the commissioners are elected at large, so why do they care about redistricting? Yeah. Because we love democracy. Um, all right. So 5% difference is the tops and reasonably compact. Important, but not legally required, is that uh, the district should be contiguous. I would argue it would be really hard to have a compact district that wasn't contiguous. And by contiguous, I mean touches itself, right? So I think it would be really hard to have a district that we could say is compact, but I've circled this part of Arvada and this part of Littleton, say they go together, right? So we can debate that, but they should be touching. Um, and I, it is a best practice that the districts keep communities of interest together. Community of interest is a nerd term of art that means any group of people that could have a matter that the Board of County Commissioners decides on. So an example might be fire mitigation, right? Our county commissioners might make some fire mitigation, and we might have a group of people that say, hey, we are one community. We are a community of interest. We'd like to be kept together because we want to have at least one county commissioner that really listens to us, right? That we can hold accountable that the majority of their district is worried about this, perhaps. A community of interest doesn't have to be a majority of a district. Um, another example might be uh, people that live along I-70. Maybe they're worried about the pollution that could come off the highway, right? And say, they can say, we are a community of interest. Um, community of interest could also be around uh, racial or ethnic groups that are looking for funding for their cultural and arts endeavors, right? Those are all different examples. And as you might have gathered already, communities of interest could overlap. They could conflict, right? Because it's both a science and a part. Um, and this is part of the reason that we're engaging in this process is that the Board of County Commissioners, it's only three people. Uh, the clerk and reporter, only one person. It is impossible for me to know every community of interest in Jefferson County. I just, I just don't know everybody. And so that is where the public comes in. And we really need people to tell us about their community so that we make sure and get these maps right. Uh, and so you might have, if you're like a Twitter person, you may have seen that there are some other counties that have already engaged in processes. They've done this a little differently than us. What's going on there? So in 2021, House 47 was passed and it created a bunch of requirements for county redistricting in certain counties. So in certain counties, it said you needed to have public hearings. You need to have lobbyist disclosure. There were rules about who could talk to who and who could draw the maps. Um, the caveat is this was only required for counties that had at least five county commissioners that were elected by district. And as you pointed out, we only have three county commissioners in Jeffco. So you don't have to do this. We don't have to do this. <laughs> we we have to redistrict. But you're required to no, no, that's all these three are only required for the five commissioners. Exactly. Um, and it's actually one of the things I'm proud of. I think this is a really good idea. I think lobbyist disclosure is a really good idea. I think having public hearings, obviously, is a really good idea. I think recruiting the public to help you draw the maps is a really good idea. That's why we're doing this, but we're doing it voluntarily. Um, this is a process that's brand new that the clerk's office created uh, because we want to make sure that there's public engagement, even if it's not legally required. 
And you you skipped the uh, you jumped a slide while I was writing. I missed there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and we will. Uh, it's a great point. Um, we will get these up online. So if you miss anything today or want to come back to it, we're also doing a recording. If you have any friends that are interested in redistricting, they couldn't make it tonight. Um, I am going to keep moving, and we, like I said, we'll post these online. So what about for us? So 1047 applied to Arapaho, El Paso, and Wealth. Uh, Jefferson and the, what, 61 other, 60 other counties um, are not required to do that process. We are required to redistrict. Uh, but we've created this process, and we'll talk more about that tonight, what we're doing in Jeffco, to be as transparent as we can and more inclusive than what's legally required. All right, so what are we doing? When are we doing it? <laughs> so as I mentioned, our goal is to make sure that we bear districts that enable commissioners to be responsive to their needs of the residents. So to your point, our commissioners are elected at large. Everybody in the county who's eligible to vote votes on every commissioner, even if you don't live in that district. But we have districts in part to make sure that we have geographic diversity, that we don't have three commissioners that are all from Golden. Um, it also is the way that you are able to hold your elected official accountable. They're supposed to represent you in your district, right? They and the district. They yeah, they have to live in the district. So another thing that's not required. Oh, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> and we'll have questions at the end too. So um, we also want to make sure that those districts reflect the diversity of our community. Um, and my goal in this is to create a transparent process. But, you know, as I mentioned with, with fire mitigation, I actually think it's a really good example. Oftentimes, I think the kind of eastern side of the county feels pretty different from the western side of the county. Right? And there might be different priorities from the folks who live there. And we want to make sure that they're able to reach out to a commissioner that that represents them and represents their needs and that they know who they can go to if they need help with an issue. And so that's that's a lot of why our districts really well, do. Come. I'd say before the Marshall fire, you might have been able to make that argument. Mm. Let her make her presentation. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, all right. So let's talk about the new process. So previously, the clerk reporter drew the maps. Uh, those then got approved eventually by the county commissioners. We weren't required to have any um, public process to garner input. This time, we're doing a much more in-depth public input process uh, with a fun online tool uh, that you can use to actually submit your own maps, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Here's the timeline. Um, you, are, you are here, you are at public meeting number two. We did another one of these on June 6th. Uh, so this is the second one. We are going to, we have already done um, a meeting with the Board of County Commissioners where we've gone over this process. It's almost the exact same presentation that you are getting today. And we gave them an example map. Um, on the website that I'm about to show you, it's actually example number two. Uh, but we gave them an example map as a jumping off point. I'm going to show that to you in just a second. Because um, oftentimes people work better if they've got an idea. Okay. Then we're getting input from the community about communities of interest. We're getting ideas for what you think the best map might be. And then the commission is going to take a final vote in August uh, to choose a final map. Okay. I'm going to skip over this one because this is the more exciting side. <laughs> so here's an example map. Um, like I said, this is not final. Um, and what you've got here is an example of um, districts that are very close in population. So between the largest district and the smallest district in population size, it's actually 0.04%, right? So the reason that we chose this map as a jumping off point to show people is that each of these districts, so we've got a purple district here, kind of yellowy one here and a reddish one up here, um, and then that overlay gives you an idea of what the current districts are, just in case you're curious. We don't have to stick to current districts, but it's an option. Um, so this is one way we could do it. Right? 
maybe this looks great to you. Maybe this looks horrible to you. Um, I think some things that would be really important to us is if you live like right here and there's a really um, important community of interest that you really want us to know about, and maybe this line is going through it, that would be a great thing to give us feedback on, right? Of, hey, you might not know it, but here's the group of people right here that you drew a line through. That would be really important to tell me. Um, how would you do that? How would you tell us? How would you think about this in your own way? You could go to our fun mapping tool, um, which you can find at districtr.org slash tag slash Jeffco 2023, or you can check out this fun QR code, or you can go to uh, our website, any of our social media, um, and it will take you to this mapping tool. All right. Let's check out the map. Can you just wait a second? Yeah, yeah. Get that copy. Down. And um, when I took a look at, at the samples that you provided, and there, there are no descriptions of what the colors or the lines mean, so I have no idea what that map meant. Okay. None, none whatsoever. Yeah. If, if you could provide some kind of input. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Well, Will might help me. How do you feel about helping Will? Mm -hmm. So fun. All right. So if you go to that website, it's going to take you here. If you scroll down, you'll get these two buttons, a purple one on your left and a red one on your right. The purple one on your left is if you want to draw your own map. You want to draw the three districts. You want to see how that goes. On the right is if you want to just draw a community of interest. You don't want to mess around with the whole map. you got better things to do on your Friday night. That's okay. You can just circle your own little community of interest. We're going to try a map. All right. So, Will, have you ever played with this website before? No? All right. That's perfect because neither have they. And so you're going to be a great example. So what we're doing is we are drawing our own districts. So for the audience, this works just like Google Maps would. You can zoom in using the plus button. You can move around. You can zoom out. And when I'm moving around, I'm using this little hand icon to move the whole map. If I click on this little paintbrush icon, I can start painting. I pick a color. Your color options are blue, yellow, and green. We're going to pick yellow. Can you tell me what those little bounded areas are in the map? With the little what? Bounded areas. Yeah, so these are precincts. Thank you. Um, and precincts all have to be the same size and population. So you'll notice that over here, they're pretty small, which means it's a dense area. Down here, not as many people live as close together. So it's a bigger geographic area, but it has the same number of people in it. All right, so what our goal is we wanna draw three different um, districts, three different colors. Right now we're on yellow. And you do that just by clicking and holding down and picking some spots. You want to try it? Okay, pick some spots. What do you think? Yeah. And then you want to go up or down from there? Yeah, perfect. All right. So Will has drawn a district that is has 26,522 people in it. We need at least 194,637 people in our district. So we don't have enough people. You want to pick some more areas that touch that one? Not good. Oh, we need a whole bunch more. There you go. We're getting there. Uh huh. Where else? In that corner? Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. All right. A little bit more of those. Yeah. Ah, oh, perfect. So now he's got a district that's 197,000. So we can go on to our next one. All right, we picked blue. Which areas do you want blue? Perfect. Right? And so, what grade are you in? What grade are you in? Will's in second grade, and he's doing a great job with this. Um, and so, we really, we partnered with Tufts University to create this tool, really so that anybody, you don't have to be a GIS specialist, you don't need to be an expert in mapping, uh, but if you have ideas about uh, your community, you are an expert in your community, and that's what we need. You did perfect. Thank you for your help. 
Um, so other things you can learn about Will's districts, right? One, we know we got to keep working on this one because we don't have enough people. We only have 7,000 people in that district. Um, we also know that between these two districts right now, population deviation of 95%. That's not within our 5% legal limit, right? So that's what that number at the bottom tells you. Uh, more fun things. You can look at the data later. So if I want to know population by race, I can display it as little circles. I can say, I'd like to know, I'm Latino. Uh, my last name's Gonzalez. I want to know where my people are. So I'm going to click on Hispanic. Um, oop, I need to take the colors off to show that. Sorry. Um, so that's going to give me ideas of I wanted to know where brown folks were. I can ask where white folks are, if that's something that you're interested in. If I click on this evaluation tab, I can also see, so I'm going to take that data layer off just because it got ugly on us. Um, if I click on evaluation, I can see the demographics of both my districts that I've drawn, right? That blue one and that yellow one. Um, if I goofed up and I was like, oh, I don't actually don't like my district. I, I don't like the way it turned out. It's okay. I can just click on my paintbrush again, click on a color, and I can color right over it. Okay. Sure, we got too many people now. <laughs> right? I'm like, oops, I got too many people. I need some of those folks to be green. Ooh. Right? And so you can keep playing with it. Again, you can zoom in if you want to see your community better. Right, you want to know where where the different roads are, the, that kind of thing. You can zoom in to see those. The closer you get, it's just like Google Maps. The more detail you get. Okay. Um, and the other thing that I would encourage you to do is you can save this. So if we go back to that districtor site where we started, and I scroll down, um, example two is the example that. Uh, we presented to the Board of County Commissioners. So if you want to zoom in and see, oh, what is, what's the jumping off point that they're starting with? Where is my house? <laughs> Example two is the one you want to click on and it'll show you. The other fun thing, if we keep scrolling past those sample plans, is you can see ones that your neighbors and friends have made. Uh, so if you want to get an idea of what some other folks have made, you can click on there. So this is, we had this meeting on June 6th at Belmar. I created this map as an example to show people how it worked. I can see that here. Um, the other thing that, I'll go back to that one. Once I've saved this, I have a link that will always take me to that map. So then if you are gonna give us a written comment that says, hey, I think the district should look this way. It would be wonderful if you included the link to the map because then we can see exactly what you're talking about. Um, but once you save it, you'll get that link and it will also save. It will also save to this master list. So other people will be able to see what you put together and kind of learn from your ideas. Um, the last thing I think I'll show you. So yeah. while you've got the sample map, so can we talk a little bit about the kind of the um what you were we were talking about, some of the Tools about them as compact as possible and contiguous, mm -hmm. and and what might not be working with some of those maps. I just noticed one. Like, <laughs> yeah, contiguous was and compact was kind of challenging. Which I don't know. What's it sound? Is your PowerPoint? I know. Great. Yeah. Um. Sorry, we're gonna see if we've got a screen share issue for our folks at home. I apologize for the people who are at home. Um. Let's see. You're seeing nothing now? Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to the district screen. The district now? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So if we scroll down to the bottom here, the one that I think you were pointing yeah, out I is, is someone who's just 
people actually there. Somebody's having some fun. There's no reason you can't have fun. I would prefer you not draw any dirty pictures on here, just as a suggestion, right? But somebody went a little crazy um, and they just, right? This is, I would argue this is not contiguous and not compact. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this one's probably not gonna work yeah. <laughs> for probably a number of reasons. But if you don't have a lot going on on your Friday night, you, you too can draw us pictures and we will welcome you. <laughs> um, but again, we have, we've got rules and, um, where they need to be compact. This guy is not. It does interestingly meet our population rules, right? Mm -hmm. So it right. would make, that would work. Somebody was really bored on that Friday night. I kind of want to be their friend. If any of this is you, we can hang out. Um, but this doesn't work because it violates that compactness requirement. Yeah. Where did the commissioners live? Because they're not going to approve a map <laughs> yeah. in their own district. Well, a district, separate district from the other two. I mean, I per I will say uh, I purposefully did not look up where the commissioners lived. Um, I think it is inherently a bad practice to draw maps around currently elected officials. Uh, maybe those folks are the, the perfect folks to be representing a district. Maybe the population has changed and the district needs to change. Um, you are correct that the person, the people who have the final say are the commissioners. And so they they may have feelings about that and they are certainly entitled to, to change maps, to give feedback. Um, I also think that if community members felt strongly around where a certain community of interest was, um, then your elected officials should listen to you. So to be totally honest with you, I have no idea uh, where each of our commissioners live and you are not wrong. It's probably a factor that they might consider when voting on a final map. We have an online question. Diane? Yeah. She, did she take it or are we going to try and listen? Yeah, I think we're going to try and listen. All right, Dan, what's your question? Let's see if our hour hey, Yeah, thanks, yeah. For, thanks for the meeting. Yeah, um, I'm just kind of wondering overall, I understand this is a requirement, but <laughs> at the same time, is there a compelling reason to change from the districts that we have? Is there a population shift? Is there, you know, because it seems like in terms of communities of the common interest and things like that, the current map is not bad. So I just wondered what you're seeing. Yeah, so the the short answer is we do have to uh, redistrict. It is a legal requirement that we do it after the census um, to account for population. So if you looked at that slide and I can pop it back up if that's helpful, it'll also be online. With the example map, we did keep it pretty close to what the current districts are. And if you think that's the right thing to do, I would encourage you to leave a public comment that says so. Um, but we are legally required to update it to account for population change. Okay, thank you. Can you I'm sorry, are you done, Diane? Can, can yes, we, that's fine, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Um, can we get a map that shows us um, the, the, the current boundaries to, as a starting point to look at the imbalance in population. I mean, I just haven't seen one yet, yeah. and I didn't see one so in, in your list. It is that those red lines that were right on the example, that's the current one. It is not drawn in districtor. It wouldn't quite be legal, right? Because we would have more than a 5% deviation. Right, but I was just- But I, we could redraw it. We could pop it in districtor. I can, I can well, spend my Friday night doing that. I mean, it's just, I just was curious if we could get a look at it because that if you were thinking of using that as a starting point yeah. and wanted to, you know, monkey about with the, the lines based on communities yeah. of interest, because I think that's where where we got into a lot of fine fine tuning in the, the um, state legislature and the, and the congressional. It won't. I will just warn you. We can put up something that would be darn close. Right. We did yeah. some. We had to legally do re precincting. After yep. the census, so the precincts have changed. Right. And we want to keep the reason that the units that we're starting with here uh -huh. are precincts is because we don't want to cut those up. Yeah. If you cut up a precinct, you risk having different ballot styles. You risk having like a very small population that has a different ballot style than all their neighbors. Right. And if you only have 10 people that have that specific kind of ballot style, right? Which means you are in 
this congressional district and this ward in Lakewood, right, then it could get hard for us to protect confidentiality of voter, right? Yeah. Um, and we want to make sure that your vote is always private. And so that's why we don't want to cut precincts up. Um, and so that's why this yeah. So, so, be, so it would be close be because we have new precincts, it would be a little different. So, but yeah, we can create something darn close and pop it up here. That would I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, that would be not too hard. Um, so the last thing, so well, I'm back to Will's map. Um right, we're seeing that even though this green is a pretty small geographic area. It's way too big population wise, right? I can't have that whole group together. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I was doing this at home, I might go back to my yellow people, kind of add some there, see how I do, right? But you see how moving one thing means you got to move a whole bunch of other things, mm -hmm. um, which again, kind of fun. I encourage you to go try it. Um, the last thing I'll show you is if you didn't want to mess with drawing whole districts, uh, but you did want us to know about a community of interest. You would click on this right hand uh, button that is in red here. And that is going to allow you to draw just a community of interest, right? So instead of, so it's still my same controls, still my little hand to move everything around, my zoom buttons to go in and out. We're going to go in pretty far. Um, I click my paintbrush and I can pick where I want to live, where I want to color in. And so maybe, I'm not sure I think this would be the greatest community of interest, but maybe I could say, you know, I've done a survey and I've talked to all my neighbors and I believe that every single person who likes whitewater rafting lives right here, <laughs> right? And I think that whitewater rafters should be a community of interest because we plan to work with our county commissioners. We want to have the ability to elect a county commissioner that is going to support our whitewater rafting pursuits, right? And so you need to know about my whitewater rafting community of interest. We all live right here, right? Great, no problem. I hit save. It'll save my community of interest. I can label it whitewater rafters. I can submit a comment that says, hey, I gave you all a map. These are my whitewater rafters, and I want you to keep us together. Please don't draw a line through the middle of us. Okay. As we said earlier, there might be overlapping communities of interest. It might not be possible to meet everybody's needs. That's something that uh, the commissioners are going to have to weigh out, uh, is balancing all of those. But it's really, really helpful uh, to know where the communities of interest are. Um, I realized I didn't show you how to save, so I'm just going to draw a fake map again. Um, uh, one more thing you might want to know about is if you're wondering if you missed anybody, you can click this button that says highlight unassigned units and it'll draw circles around the ones you missed. <laughs> um, where was that button again? Right down here below population, highlight unassigned units. We'll draw little oh, red circles around the ones you forgot, right? So again, my map is probably not gonna work, but yeah, I got problems. I got problems with my map. But just to show you, if I wanted to save this map, I click save. It's gonna pop up with this box. I can name it, right? So tonight, golden. You can call it a info session so we know what who the heck was doing this one. Um, it gives you your URL if you wanted to share that in the comments. You can also just get that by clicking on your map. I can click share gallery. And now when I go back to our gallery, uh, the internet doesn't love us at the moment. There we go. We should get a new one. I've got to refresh. Right, we now have our golden info session one. Mm -hmm. If I want to come back and see what we worked on, I can click on that. To work from there. Um, yeah. All right. That was like a ton of information.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi, I'm Julie. Um, how will the you know various maps be evaluated? I mean, you're going to get probably a hundred or so. <laughs> I mean, if you don't, if we really don't, if we're really relying on the county commissioners to make the final decision, what criteria are they going to be using to evaluate? I mean, maybe the top three or whatever. Um, so legally, they're only required to look at the ones that we talked about, right? Is it within that 5%? Um, are they compact? Like those, that's what we're looking at. So that's what they're legally required. Past that, there aren't a lot of guidelines. Um, and so I think that's why if you feel really strongly about a community of interest or a particular set of maps, um, <clears throat> I would really encourage you to articulate that in a public comment. We have a form on our website um, where you can submit, you know, here's the, because, you know, maybe this is interesting, but I think somebody named early, hey, I went on your website and I didn't understand what any, what any of these districts even meant. And so if you include a narrative in that public comment saying, here's why this is really important, um, I think those are going to be the most useful and compelling rather than just a map. Can I ask another question? Of course. I know that the 400,000 population tends to, well, I don't know, I think with the state, as you you probably know a lot more than I do, every district yeah. for the state legislature, but um, the 400,000 uh, number population seems to be kind of a cutoff between three county commissioners mm. versus five county commissioners. Mm. Why are we limiting Jefferson County, which is only is 80% of the population of Denver at this point? Why are we still at three? three <laughs> not going to five. Yeah, it better represents the population of the county. Man, do you want me to take that? <laughs> uh, I think there's probably lots of opinion here. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the county, because people voted it down. Well, okay. we have had several voting sessions, cycles where we, um, we've been asked to approve five county commissioners, and we've chosen not to. And I'm just kind of thinking from the voters. And we are a big supporter of five county commissioners because we do believe that the people would be better represented, but it will cost money to do that. You and mean the, the, the vote will cost yeah. no, no, county commissioners will cost money. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, because because, because they, have they have salaries. They have staff. They need office space. And salary. Uh -huh. So, you know, but we just believe we would be better represented. If we had five county commissioners. So there's no law because the 400,000 or whatever that no, no. is. There, there was um, a bill that got introduced in the House that didn't make it out of committee this past session uh, that would have changed that law a bit. So I think there could be interest in the state legislature um, and they, they could decide to change that to make requirements around a population threshold or something like that. Um, and it's definitely something that our elected officials have talked about, but um, has not gotten out of committee. And then the other way, if you wanted to change it, would be by a vote of people. And um, historically, the uh, residents or the voters in Jeffco have decided that that wasn't what they wanted. Mm. Yep. The, okay. the other issue in there is that um, with Tabor, county funding is fairly limited and small. So if we get those five commissioners, takes away from other county staff like you know the sheriff's office the clerk and recorder's office um so you know the pot is only so big so if we push it over there and then other things have to shrink well it would be much to shrink but wouldn't necessarily have to shrink because we have to get a certain list no, in the shrink still we're not that's not we're, we're not being bruised. <laughs> we're, get, we're getting real nerdy and look <laughs> Um, so talk specifically that. about the redistricting process. Any other? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. I, I don't know if I know the terminology real well, but I, I was doing some reading, and the home rule communities or the communities that are self-managing. Um, what? I don't understand how. Yeah, you know, the county commission may not be able to make a decision over that home rule district or municipality. So, how do those figure into the population? You know, they're not being ruled by the Jefferson County Commissioners. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, so, and I think to your point that there are um, different levels of government that have different jurisdiction, right? And then within that, depending on how your community is organized, you have control over different things, whether or not you're home rule, whether or not you're a statutory county or uh, jurisdiction. 
And so there are a whole host of things that, depending on where you live and what community you're in, might be the jurisdiction of our county commissioners, might be the jurisdiction of the state legislature, might be the jurisdiction of the person you've elected at the city level, right? right? That gets really complicated really quickly, but I think the, the throughput is that no matter what, you should have a say in the people representing you, right? Because that issue, we, we are a democracy. That issue is going to be decided by someone you elected, and I think fair districts are the foundation of that. So making sure that you have fair districts that represent you accurately so that your voice can be heard with the people that you elect at all levels of government. I think that most people know that their congressperson is really important. I would argue that the people that you elect at the local level are almost more important when it comes to your daily life. So, you know, I, I'm, which is why I'm so excited that you all are here. I know that you could be at happy hour, you could be barbecuing with your family. There's a lot you could be doing right now and you came to a library to talk about local redistricting. And I just, I think it really is foundationally important. And so, you know, whether we see the world the same way or not really doesn't matter because we need all voices in this process. So I just, in case I haven't already said that, thank you for being here. Thank you for being active in your community. And I hope that you will go Tell your friends um, that they too can can be a map drawer. <laughs> what communities of interest have been identified so far? You know, we have seen. If you look at the um, at this website, you'll see that not very many people have drawn just a community of interest. We have gotten a handful of public comments. Um, we hope that more come in. And so far, I would say we're we are hearing about fire and fire mitigation areas. Um, is there other other things? I'd say rural and urban. Yeah, yeah, just sort of like the collective. Somebody gave testimony um, at the board of county commissioner meeting, and one of the things he talked about was different types of housing stock, multifamily units versus single family units, and the way that might impact um, the kind of policies you might be looking for. I thought that was an interesting one, and I hadn't I hadn't necessarily heard that in Jeffco before. Yeah. Um, where is our access to those public comments? Um, they are not up yet. Our next July 18th okay. is the next briefing of the board, and so we will have a formal document that puts all those together in advance of that. So we won't be able to see the public comments before when we have to make our comments. You'll be able, you can see, so only one person came to the first hearing that the Board of County Commissioners had. Um, so that pub, that comment is already public. That was the one that mentioned different kinds of housing. Um, but we don't have, we don't currently have a way to post those online, but we can look into it. We can see if we can get those to you earlier. I mean, in the, in the state legislature and, and congressional redistricting, right. when those were posted, they were they were immediately accessible to anyone. They were, and, and there were lots of rules about Because we made it legally required, which right. is right. But <laughs> now you haven't done so because of your push for transparency. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a good slide. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we, they will be public and we can see if we can get them out earlier. Can I correct? Can I? Yeah. If, no, it's July 18th that the commissioners are going to submit their redistricting plan. Great final, great additional question. Thank you for clarifying. What was that? I said, that's a great clarification. Thank you for that. Yeah. So the, how the process works is Jefferson County Board of County Commission, they have, um, they don't call them working groups. Are they the task force? So they have a, um, they have a briefing okay. that is the week, two weeks, the week, two weeks. It's two weeks before the public hearing, right? So those, um, so what will happen is we will take the public comments that have come in so far, okay. um, and we will brief the commissioners on what has come in. Okay. And that's going to be on July 18th. You're going to brief the commissioners on July 18th. They're not. They will that, not vote on July 18th. Okay. Correct. So that so was it's your, it's your information that you are gathering from all of us yes. that you are going to then present to the commission. Have I got that right? You've got it perfect. <laughs> okay, and then thank the, you. <laughs> the commission. <laughs> no, I, I should have specified. Yes. So there will be a hearing. There 
should not say here. It's not here. There will be a briefing, a briefing to the county commissioners on July 18th. Okay. Um, that in some other places, you can think of it as like a working group in some ways, or you can think of it as like a, a working meeting. Yep. Is, is that a public meeting? It is available online, but there's no public comment. Okay. Do you have to sign up like you did for these things? No, you can get it. You can uh, just go to the county commissioner website and there's a link to just view the webinar. This is no, yeah. you can do it. You can zoom it. It's on what? I don't know. <laughs> And, and, and then the, the archives. Yep, yeah, the they saved those. Yeah, I've never needed to look at one. Yeah. So that one you you can watch live. Zoom. Um, right. But if you if you're not available to watch it live, then it it is archived. I believe so. I just don't know. Oh, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Um, and I will send a correction if I'm wrong, but I believe so. Um, and then on right now we're scheduled for August first would be the final vote and the hearing where there would be public comments availability. August 1st. Correct. But I assume the hearing is before the final vote. So they have they have public comments. Um, yes, there will be public comments. Right, they'll start with public comments. Yeah. Okay. So if you're curious on what what maps have been you know, submitted, you can see that on an ongoing basis. Um, you can also tune in and watch the briefing on July 18th, and then that final vote should happen on August 1st. So we have some time. people yeah. can still get their feedback in. We still need it. <laughs> I have a quick question yeah. about your decision about how you proposed your two example maps. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that you know the dividing lines are pretty much horizontal across the county, mm -hmm. where being from the west part of the county years ago, I mean, I would see that maybe there's some reason to not have them do the vertical, do vertical instead of horizontal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so if again, we input is awesome. That's why we're doing this process. You should go play with this. Uh, well, and 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 I th I think you can I think you can discuss it in a variety of ways too because I'm just have, wondering how. Amanda. Yeah. Yeah. The, so honestly, um, our GIS department helped with that together. They um, were set a goal of having a map that had a very, very low deviation between populations. So like I said, I think that one's at a 0.04. And we kept it somewhat similar to what the current commission districts are as a jumping on point. Um, it wasn't, especially on my part, um, it wasn't that I think those are necessarily the ideal districts, um, but they're similar to what we have now, which seems like a good place to start the discussion from. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I think is is a really interesting conversation to have is, uh, I think the Belmar one that I drew as a good example of what you're talking about, this guy. So I started by saying, what would a Western district look like? Mm -hmm. And is that all unincorporated, Jeff Gold? It's not all unincorporated. Yeah, we we get, there, yeah like, exactly. There, there, that helps you. We've got Morrison. So no, there, there's little spot incorporated. Correct. Like where I live. <laughs> <laughs> Very little. But so yeah. one That's of the things that is, I think, interesting about this map, and I'm not saying good or bad, is that as you can see, just because there's so much more population on the eastern part of the county, I had to grab a lot here, right, in order to, to hit the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's okay. Maybe your argument is, you know, these are really compact. It's okay that this one isn't as compact, but I think it's an interesting conversation to have of one of our requirements is compactness. Do we think this map meets that requirement? It's a, it's a discussion. Um, I also think a discussion that would be interesting to have is, um, you know, the person who lives down here probably doesn't know the person who lives up here very well. You know, that's true. But, but regardless, yeah. even in those highly densely populated yeah. maps, they, it, they don't know each other either. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe that doesn't matter. But, and that was kind of at the beginning when I was saying this is both a science and an art, and why one person kind of can't know everything about the communities. Yeah. Are questions like that where I don't know that there's a perfectly right or a perfectly wrong answer? 
Um, but you know, there's probably some reasons that this is a great book, and there are probably some reasons that this is a terrible one. There are, yeah. <laughs> so you know, I, I would, I would, so that gray area, area has so much territory to cover, right? That right. how can he how can be, be in a that place that whereas a more compact district right. allows him to be in a and if you know anything about the, the fire protection with districts, this is across, this cuts them into mm -hmm. all kinds of different pieces. Um, it cuts all of the municipalities up as well. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you know, if you talk about communities of interest, then this, this you know, begins to not make much sense. Yeah, but these are exactly the yeah. kind of conversations. And this is what you have to discuss. This is why yeah, you have yeah. to put in yeah. 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 I shouldn't be hiding in a room in the dark by myself. Yeah. So. Um, I won't take up your whole night. I know we're kind of starting to run out of, time, out of time. I don't know if there's any other questions in the chat or anything because I haven't had my eye on it. Okay. Um, online folks, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, sorry, we have the screen share a little goofed up at the beginning. Um, we'll see if we, we'll make sure to do better next time. Hey, hey Amanda. Amanda. Yes. This is Diane again. I do have a question. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Hypothetically, <laughs> we have one commissioner who is not up for re-election. There are two districts that are, op are gonna be on the ballot in 2024. Mm -hmm. One is not up for re-election. If that commissioner is drawn out of their district, oh. what happens? Yeah, so the question <laughs> for anybody that wasn't able to hear is we have some commissioners, we have one commissioner that's up for re-election, for, yeah, for re-election, uh, the other two are not. What happens if we draw districts and they're not, they look more like this instead of the horizontal ones? What if we did this? Uh, do we immediately kick them all out of office? We do not. Um, everybody finishes out their term. So uh, the only way that they get kicked out is if they move of their own goalish. Um, but if we move the lines on them, they don't, they don't get kicked out of office. That's a great question. Okay, thank you. Yep. Cool. Thanks for getting nerdy with me. I appreciate you. you. My dear, you are. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so much. It's so fun. Go tell all your friends and family. Uh, but thank yeah. you again. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't get them engaged in the last three days. I don't know why they'd be so happy. Cool. All right. I'm going to shut this down. She said it over. No, I didn't. Yeah. Okay.